We welcome in our co-hosts in this uh, second hour. New York Times best-selling author, the social assassin. You think it, but he says it. John Gilstrap. Good morning, Johnny. Good morning. Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Matt Harvey, who is not here in a prosecutorial manner as a co-host today. Good morning, Mr. Harvey. Good morning. Good morning. And a uh, moment for shameless self-promotion? Yeah, please. All right. Well, at 2 o'clock, April 6th, on this coming Saturday, please come by and join me and best-selling author Jennifer Ermintrout at the Martinsburg Public Library at 2 p.m., for an event that is sponsored by uh, Four Seasons Books, uh, we're going to uh, be there and talk about books and writing and, and all kinds of stuff. You can buy the books there. Uh, the uh, You have to have tickets to attend. It's free. You don't have to pay any money. But to get the tickets, you go to fourseasonsbooks.com. I'd love to see everybody. All right. And you can uh, also join us at the Roundhouse Saturday and Sunday for the home show. And we'll be uh, doing the broadcast. I'll be doing it with Mr. Gilstrap Saturday morning from 10 to noon and then in the afternoon with Mr. Hornby from 1 until 3. The Berkeley County Republican Club, in cooperation with the Jefferson County Republican Executive Committee, is presenting their annual Lincoln Dinner April the 20th at Heritage Hall in Inwood with a candidate meet and greet. Many local state primary candidates will attend. The keynote speaker is retired Lieutenant Colonel Alan West. He's there, too, for tickets. Get in touch with Lisa White. At 240-464-1608, 240-464-1608. Our first guest in the second hour of the program is a candidate for the Jefferson County Commission. He is from the Charlestown District. He is also a retired U.S. Navy captain, Jack Effestay. Jack, good morning. Thanks for coming in. Belly on up closer to that microphone. Well, Somebody thank else. you very much for having me aboard. I, I appreciate it. Uh, never been interviewed by you before, so this is... Uh, this is my first trip. Yes, and I've never had you ask and answer questions for me before either. It's the first That's time for both so of us. It's a, yeah. it's a virgin trip for all of us. How about that? <laughs> Tell us the Jack Hefestay story. How did you wind up in Jefferson County, West Virginia? Well, uh, after I retired from the United States Navy and from uh, Lockheed Martin, um, I moved here in the early 2000s. Um, we bought a house, and uh, my wife and I lived there until she passed away uh uh, about four years ago, a little over four four years ago, yeah, she had cancer, and uh, so now I'm kind of living alone. I'm downsizing and uh, trying to consolidate a bunch of uh, stuff. Uh, my whole family has pretty much passed away. I'm the last of the Hephaestus. Uh, there, there aren't any more anywhere that uh, ever were had the name born to. Uh, all my brothers and sisters have passed away, family, aunts and uncles, everybody is uh, pretty much gone. And uh, that's that's bad news. What is the worst, move, worst news is uh, over the years I actually picked up um, basically all of their junk, which is assets, and some people have do collections and it's junk. Uh, unfortunately, my ancestors uh, collected things of value. So it's pretty hard to just sit them out by the uh, the curb and let the trash take them away. Mm -hmm. But it's been a slow, tedious process because as you go through mementos from your family, sure. it brings back a lot of memories. And uh, it's generally part of their legacy. And uh, so I um, had an interesting family on my wife's side, a lot of retired military there, um, and uh, wonderful people. And on my side, when I say my uh, brother passed away, Actually, but with within about a week of my wife passing away, he was ten years younger than me. My sister passed away about a year and a half ago. She also had cancer, and my older sister passed away in uh, 1980. That's a tough run. So yeah, it's been it's been rough, and like I said, I've lost all my aunts and uncles. So it's uh, it's tough. So Jack, you told us before we went on the air uh, the family lineage going back to Germany, and you come from some. Uh, a very interesting lineage there. Can you track back a couple of those? Yeah, I'll try to make it as battles brief, your family brief spotted? as possible. But according to the, and I, there's more than what I told you. Um, my oldest known ancestor's name was Velianus, and he was a mercenary in the Roman army. He fought in the Fifth Legion, and the the emblem of the Fifth Legion of all things is an elephant. So I assume he was a Republican. <laughs> and uh, as as time went on, um, he, one of his uh, descendants um, decided he didn't, well, actually, Valianus did not want to be in the Roman army anymore. He wanted to be a Christian. 
So he left the uh, Roman army and um, was baptized Helfrich, which in German is basically helper. Mm -hmm. And they moved to a place around Geislingen, uh, Germany. And uh, that's uh, where the family kind of set its roots for many, many generations. And uh, one of them fought in the Battle of Tours with Charles the Hammer Martel, who I believe was the father of Charlemagne, or two, no, grandfather of Charlemagne, Pippin the Great and then Charlemagne. Mm -hmm. and, but anyway, he picked up a title, uh, Count von Helfenstein. Best name ever. Yeah, it, I thought it was really, uh, really a neat sounding name. And uh, there were 36 generations of Helfensteins. And um, they played on the name, uh, which sounded in German a little bit like elephant. In fact, if you go to Geislingen, they have an elephant uh, fountain dedicated to the Helfensteins. But anyway, they gave up the title in the 1640s. Um, uh, other, their, their descendants actually became uh, very religious oriented. And uh, uh, one of my, my direct ancestor moved, uh, came to the, the New World in about 1752 on the British ship Recovery. Now, I'm not certain, but in those days, uh, when you got off the ship, you swore allegiance to the King of England, and then you were pro promptly taxed. <laughs> and if you could not pay the tax, you became an indentured servant. So he may have been an indentured servant, servant because he mm -hmm. was uh, pretty much off the, the map until his older brother came over about 11 years later. And that's Peter Helfenstein, who became um, a major in the Continental Army and uh, actually contracted uh, malaria when he was down fighting in uh, South Carolina, of all places. He died of malaria. But the family uh, grew up in the uh, Winchester, Martinsburg, Hagerstown, and Shepherdstown area. So the interesting thing is, is it's been a long circle, but I'm back uh, where the family started in the same general region. Um, uh, Peter Helfenstein helped set up the Mount Hebron's uh, church and cemetery down in Martinsburg. Mm -hmm. uh, he's buried down there. has a really nice monument. So uh, this, this is really neat for me because we have a lot of family here, and some of their descendants fought in the Civil War. Both sides. Both yourself. sides, yeah. We had one Confederate. Most of the family was uh, Union, mm -hmm. and my great-great-great-grandfather uh, was killed at the Battle of Five Forks, April 1st, 1865, which is just basically a little over a week before the end of the war, and uh, basically two weeks before Lincoln was assassinated. So um, it's a pretty interesting family history. Uh, she, the, the wife, uh, Rebecca, um, raised two small boys. Uh, one of them became a skilled carpenter, and the other one was an artist and actually did some uh, rather large uh, paintings up in uh, Martinsburg. But the family mi migrated from uh, Martinsburg to uh, Hagerstown, Baltimore. I was born in Baltimore, and I always like to say I escaped at a very early age. Uh, my dad worked for the Glenn L. Martin Company, and we took, he took a transfer to Colorado, and uh, we lived out there for a number of years, but as I got older, uh, I really love the East Coast, and I love this area, and I was very, very happy to accept a transfer to come back to this area and uh, work at, uh, at Lockheed Martin. And uh, when they merged, of course, they, it used to be Martin Marietta right. and Lockheed Missiles and Space Company. I actually worked for Lockheed Missiles and Space Company for, for a while, too. Uh, both of them very, very fine uh, companies. And uh, most of the stuff I did was pretty classified. Uh, so I can't tell you about it, but the last project I did work on that I can brag about was the Space Telescope, uh, Hubble Space Telescope. And I uh, was assigned to a project which was the Faint Object Spectrograph, which was actually a spectrometer. Don't ask me the difference. Uh, that's for the te techno weenies. But uh, I, it, was, it was pretty interesting uh, work. Um, the faint object spectrograph was the primary instrument on the Hubble Space Telescope. And as you know, the government and the taxpayers getting their money out of uh, 
the Hubble Space Telescope because it's still up there and operating. It's a fine piece of engineering. Very nice. So, what what seat are you? You have a primary opponent, but yeah, what seat are you I'm contesting a, on the current board? Who, the who? Charlestown, and that was the that was the position that was vacated by Claire Ath. Claire Ath resigning. And then there was the kerfuffle over the replacement, right? Which went on for uh, probably way too long. And uh, I have opinions on that, too, but if you want to ask them, go ahead. Mm -hmm. And uh, now it is occupied by uh, uh, Pasha Maji, who does not live in Charleston. And cannot run for re-election. Cannot run. Well, he wasn't elected. He was appointed, so he can't run for re-election. But he he could have, if he lived in Charlestown, he could have uh, run. But he does not. He he is not running, uh, and he was a... A candidate for delegate uh, two years ago and was defeated in the primary by uh, delegate Bill Ridenour. Right. So uh, uh, he's a, like I say, Pasha is a very engaging, likable person. Um, I don't like all of his politics, but uh, he's pretty easy to get along with. Uh, if, mm-hmm. if uh, I'm sure you've interviewed yeah, him. Yeah, we've had him on the show uh, a couple times. Yeah, and he's, he's charming. He's, yeah. he's very, very charming person. He's a uh, Green energy lobbyist. Uh, so uh, he should have had some um, conflicts with uh, decisions and votes on the on the county commission, and I think that was one of the objections uh, to him. Um, my personal favorite. Uh, well, I liked uh, Isabel Simon. I've known her Elliot's probably wife. longer. Well, almost longer than everybody. Uh, my second favorite, strong favorite, was um, Keith Lowry, mm-hmm. who's also a retired United States uh, Navy Jefferson captain. Community Ministries. We've had yep. him on the show many and, times. And uh, he has. Uh, I, I served with uh, with Keith on active duty. Uh, he was in an off Office of Naval Intelligence unit that I was in. He was mm-hmm. in a detachment, which. Uh, managed and trained people to do interrogation of prisoners of war and that was back in the 1990s and it was kind of like a they didn't know about 911 mm-hmm. and what a big deal uh, that interrogation uh, training would be because we had a lot of people that were ready to go down to Gitmo never been there never did any of that stuff um, I was mostly in management uh, of uh, Navy programs and, and, and people from about, uh, uh, trying to think, it was late, it was late 90s. Uh, I, I, when I lived in Colorado, uh, I picked up uh, um, a staff position with a couple admirals down in uh, Dallas, Fort Worth. There's a naval air station, used to be a naval air station down there. And I work for uh, Admiral Gene Dickey and Admiral Bruce Black, in addition to doing uh, a lot of training activities for the, for uh, the Navy. I was also their public affairs officer and their historian. So, and I did uh, uh, a newsletter, which was Navy, and it had a distribution of over six thousand. So it wasn't it wasn't mm-hmm. trivial. So I had done a lot of neat stuff, be, and then when I moved to uh, uh, the D.C. area, I I, I picked up uh, an executive officer position in uh, in the, down at the Office of Naval Intelligence, and I ran that. Uh, I was executive officer for about five years. Uh, I was part of the Sacred Twelve. There were uh, basically six units, and the CO and XO positions were continue. This was reserve, and they were considered to be a uh, uh, high pot. Very, very visible. And then after I got, I, uh, I ended my tour as an executive officer with the largest uh, Navy unit in the United States. Uh, I, I was uh, given the, the commanding officer position of NCIS. And I was a senior Navy officer in NCIS nationally. And uh, that was really neat. It was, and it just happened to be that it was the same time that they set up the TV show you know, the Mark Harmon TV show. Interesting mm-hmm. thing is I went to school with his sister, huh. uh, who is, I don't comment on how ladies look, but uh, she was incredibly uh, fine looking woman. <laughs> and she still is even in her old age of, you know, she's gotta be in her seventies now. She uh, she actually married John DeLorean. 
Uh, well, the, the DeLorean fame, yeah. The DeLorean family. She was 22 and he was 44. Uh, it was a, not a match made in heaven because I don't think it lasted very long. But uh, let's say, put it this way. Kelly Harmon got along just fine mm -hmm. without John DeLorean. And, of course, she did a lot of uh, uh, movies and TV, TV stuff on her own. But she was, she was quite, uh, quite a looker, uh, probably the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life. She was that, that attractive. So. Mr. Gilstrap. Okay. <clears throat> Getting to your, your website here. Okay. Top priority you've got here, near and dear to my heart, ambulance, fire, and police departments. What is What do you want to see done? Well, uh, the first thing, um, there has been some statistics that have put out that say that the response time has been reduced. But what's happened is this response time late in places like Charlestown, where most of the ambulances are located, is virtually nil. So that balances out. Uh, virtually nil. What does that mean? Uh, the, the response times have been very close, very low in Charlestown, very, very quick uh, response times with emergency services. Uh, but places like Middleway, uh, uh, the Mountain, uh, and uh, a couple other spots in, in the county, have actually lost and their their response times have gone a lot higher. So what I'd like to do is is really have a, a more careful look at the response times and place the ambulances where they will actually do the most good for the county. Uh, I, I think you're probably aware of the fact that people in Middleway were, were pretty upset as well as the people in the mountain, particularly the mountain, because uh, I've driven out there many, many times and there isn't a good crossroad to get to Mission Road and the, and the other places up on the hill. Um, so it's, it's, it's a concern to me that, that some parts of the county aren't getting the, um, uh, the protection, the response time that they should. Is it and a matter I, of just reassigning ambulances, shifting yeah, them around? Yeah, and uh, you know, a, a more centralized approach sounded like a fairly decent idea when it, when it first surfaced. And I'm not against being efficient but I think that if you're talking about emergency services, uh, that should be the number one priority in uh, for the county commission to make sure that they're well funded and that people are getting the kind of uh, uh, response uh, times that they need or, or deserve. So it's not just ambulance, it's fire and of course police. And of course I, police, I support the police department 100%. Uh, I always wanted to be a cop and I always wanted to be a firefighter I got to do a little bit of that in the Navy because training for firefighting is, is a big thing in the Navy. And of course at NCIS, we had loads of uh, special agents uh, that worked for me and uh, were, were active duty and reserve. Um, after 9-11, they, they uh, mobilized a lot of the uh, reservists out there and gave them special training to become special agents. So uh, they uh, a lot of the stuff that they do, for instance, uh, I'm shifting a little bit, but they, a lot of the stuff that NCIS does is they offer uh, protection. So if you're watching the Army-Navy football game and the president's sitting there and you can pick out you know, famous people around him, the people who you don't know could very well be uh, NCIS agents that are offering uh, protection uh, for the president or vice president or whoever the dignitaries are that it's there. So it's pretty interesting stuff. Uh, the NCIS also does a lot of counter uh, terrorism. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful unit. Uh, I was blessed uh, to be uh, the head guy for, for two years. Although I say head guy, it's, uh, I was the, the military guy, but it's really run by civilians. And uh, the reason that the Navy is there is so that they can have the end in uh, CIS, because without the Navy being there, it's just criminal investigative service. So, uh, but a lot of great people there. So, uh, um, hey, when the reason I have that first is I think when when the the county commission does budgeting, uh, the first thing that they should do is make sure that uh, fire, uh, police, and uh, ambulance are receiving adequate funding. That's my top priority. Jack, I want to ask you about okay. the uh, replacing the commissioners. Was your name on the list as one to be considered? Uh, yes. Uh, did you ultimately get scratched by I somebody? I got scratched. Who scratched uh, did you know? Uh, basically, uh, I was scratched by uh, 
the Republican Executive Committee, um, and, and I don't want to go into names. Can you come closer to your mic, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, there you go. Um, I have a reputation uh, for being freelance, my own person. I cannot be controlled. I cannot be bought. Um, and if something's wrong, I'll say it. Mm -hmm. And I think with the uh, the there was an element on that board that wanted a yes man to replace Claire Ath, because Claire Ath, um, I don't I don't know how well you know her, but I thought she was an extremely nice person. Uh, she had ethics. It's interesting that a lot of people think the reason she actually left the position was that she wanted to accept a job um, in D.C. as a lobbyist. And ultimately, she was replaced by a lobbyist. So she probably could have stayed and just been careful on her votes. But anyway, at the uh, executive uh, committee, uh, when they did their voting, I was present. And uh, I was eliminated uh, late in the balloting. But uh, there was a block of four uh, that voted uh, consistently uh, for the same people. And I, I had a block of three. But uh, and then occasionally I picked up uh, another vote, but it wasn't enough for me to reach the threshold of six. So uh, in a way, it might have been good because if I had been if I was sitting in the seat now uh, and I and I am a resident of Charlestown, as was Keith Lowry, uh, two of the people, two, two of the people. Actually, there was another lady who I really don't know who was also a resident of, of Charlestown. There were three people that were. Charlestown residents, in my opinion, they were the people that should have been nominated. Earlier, when uh, Josh Compton uh, left the board, it was a hard, fast rule that you had to live in Charlestown. Mm -hmm. And uh, our beloved attorney general put out an opinion that uh, you didn't have to live in Charlestown. Uh, but if you read down in his opinion, it also said you had to follow the rules. And if you went to the rules, the rules said you had to live in Charlestown. So um, it was kind of like a, a different look at the, at the code, which, of course, as you know, uh, the, co the state code is written for uh, three commission counties. And there's two counties that have five commissioners, Berkeley and Jefferson. And the code isn't written for us. It needs to be fixed so that there's a qualification or better qualification for uh, if it happens again, and it probably will. Six years is an awfully long time to serve for a commissioner. Matt, uh, are you allowed to comment? I know you're a Jefferson County prosecuting attorney. You advised the commission, but I don't know if you're allowed to comment on the legality of the no, three versus no, five. No, because that's, that's, that's not a legal fact. That's a legal opinion that's currently in the courts. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you cannot comment, correct? I'm not going to comment uh, on that. Because if I don't ask you, somebody in our audience can say, why isn't Matt Harvey chiming in? <laughs> well, it, like I say, there's a lot of opinions out there. And um, uh, one of the things I try to do uh, diligently is listen to all the diverse opinions that are out there and then try to make an evaluation based on what I know. Mm -hmm. I respect uh, Matt, Matt Harvey as a, as a prosecutor. I respect our attorney general. Um, in my humble opinion, the Secretary of State is actually the person that should have weighed in mm -hmm. on the thing and, uh, and made a decision quickly so that it wasn't uh, uh, something that, that languished uh, for, for many, many months. Uh, Jack will be at our candidate forum along with his opponent. As I mentioned before, we'll find out more about his positions then. We're over time a little bit, but Are I, we really? if I can get a quick answer from you sure. on this one, would you regard yourself, and as you look at the commission makeup, would you regard yourself as someone who is a supporter of the two commissioners who uh, were not attending meetings or someone who is a detractor of those two? I would consider myself a strong supporter of uh, Jennifer Krause and Tricia Jackson. Um, I don't think they should be removed from office for misdemeanors. If there were felonies, that would be a different different situation. Um, and it's, uh, th the whole thing to me has become extremely political and it's just not right. Uh, the way it's being done. Mm -hmm. uh, when they were taken to court, for instance, the amount, the bail money uh, was outrageous. Uh, I was told that it's pretty typical that they have um, really, really bad people that they don't even set bail for. 
and both of the county well, commissioners. I don't, I don't want to go down that yeah, lane because that. that's, that's what I heard. hearsay okay. stuff and, and then, whatever. Uh, but, I, just, but, I really just want to know okay. if you were supportive of them or not. Uh, Trisha and, okay. uh, and but where can people learn more about your campaign for the Jefferson County Commission? Well, I've got a website, hefestay.com. H-E-F-E-S-T-A-Y. H-E-F-E-S-T-A-Y. I'm on Facebook, um, and it's Jack Hefestay, Jefferson County, W-V. Uh, the good, the good old. Uh, that's my page. Mm-hmm. The good old Facebook uh, types uh, are, are giving me a hard time about actually changing uh, that because I wanted to change it to Jefferson County Commission W, and they won't let me modify. So I gave, I gave up fighting with right. uh, Facebook. Right. Thanks for coming in, Jack. Okay, well, thank you. Looking forward to talking to you again, and uh, we'll see you at the candidate. Anybody has a question, send me, a, send me a question on the email, and I. I try to be responsive as possible.